Hey, you do comedy? What'd you do? What'd you? That's what? probably mine. That's probably mine. Oh, okay. I thought it was, was mine. Was that mine? That's probably mine, right? The beat? The. the you know what? Doo -doo -doo. I'm probably going to have to hold this, dude, because. Yeah, I, I like calling it. It keeps <laughs> going down. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. All right. Uh, so welcome to You Do Comedy. Oh, shit. We've been recording. <laughs> Just Today on the show, we have Chris Spring, local comedian, good friend, and we're going to talk about confidence. Being a comedian, you need to have confidence in yourself, in your material. So let's get to it. So you hey, do comedy? I do comedy. Occasionally. Occasionally. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so let me give you a little background of the show. Okay. It's not really comedy, like what do you do, how do you do it, mm -hmm. your style. It's more of like anybody out there who is thinking of doing comedy or curious about what it, comedy really is is to certain people what it takes to get there what do you how do you start things like that gotcha um, so my first question for you mm -hmm. how long have you been doing comedy that is a very um loaded question no okay it's, look it's, here's the thing it's, it's not it's really a direct okay. question as it can get uh, here's my thing uh i'm somebody who started like a long time ago and i because of which some people are going to relate to this is uh, I had things that happened in my life that I had to keep stopping. Okay. So like when I first, the first time that I ever did stand up, uh, was uh, I did it at the Laugh Factory in Hollywood. Nice. Um, it wasn't that nice to be honest with you, because because <laughs> I, I I started at the open mic level, which obviously everyone starts there, right, and, right. unless you're freaking connected or you got money or whatever. So, I uh, I did it with my twin brother, which Wait, is you the, have a twin. Yes, that's the other interesting thing. Oh. And uh, here was the thing. We had talked about doing stand-up for, like, years at this point. Okay. And, and ever since we were – I remember I was seven years old when I took my twin brother to the side. And I was like, I was like, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he was like, a firefighter. No, an astronaut. And I was like, no, 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 no. You know what I'm going to be? I'm going to be a comedian. And he was like <laughs> – me too. <laughs> but then immediately he was like, what's that? <laughs> and, okay. uh, so he, what he, I had, I had seen comedy and I immediately fell in love with, I think the one thing that appealed to me immediately was the fact that they didn't have a band behind them. It was just some dude on stage with one mic and just making people laugh, controlling the crowd. Who, who was the first comedian you ever heard, listened to watch, whatever. Well, see what well, uh, I do remember it was somebody that was on that. They used to have a series uh, on A and E called um, "Night at the Improv" or something like that. Okay, yeah. something along those lines. And, but I don't remember exactly who it was. But they connected with you enough to be yeah, like, yeah, that I was like, wow, that's fucking badass. That's uh, what I want to do. The first one I remember is George singer. Lopez. Oh, George Lopez. George Lopez. His special was on TV, on Comedy Central. I was like eight or nine or ten maybe, and he's making jokes about Churu and Disneyland, and I'm like, hey. I can relate to that because my parents didn't want to buy me a churro and then we had to split it between the three of us. That's, yeah, if you're a bad parent if you don't want to get your kid their own churro, first of all. For real. It's just, I, it's 12 bucks for I one. Know. Just, just, I mean, I get, get it. it. <laughs> no. But we'll remember that churro forever. Oh, definitely. definitely. No, you know what's funny about George Lopez is like, uh, my dad actually went to school with him. No, the real, well, no question. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Look, George Lopez, if you don't know, comes from the San Fernando Valley. He actually went to San Fernando High School, which is the high school that I graduated from. So when my father. So you guys are alumni. Yeah, we're both. Um, Did you ever hit him up like, "Yo, hey, alumni, how about an alumni show?" You that's know? you know what I would, but there's no way. <laughs> People like, don't get your ass out of here. Yeah, no, uh, no, okay, yeah, let's do a show together. Get out of here. No, and my dad went to school with him. Here's the other trippy thing about him is he lived in Pacoima, right, which is where I came from, uh, a couple streets down from where my brothers. Uh, wife's mother lives. That's where his grandmother. That's where he grew up. I'm trying to figure out. Is this the grandma? Is that this what it is? This is the grandma. The one he okay. would talk about on stage. She lived in Pacoima, and my my brother's wife, their parents still live there, mm -hmm. and they like live like a couple houses down from. So it's just it's funny. Wait, what do you that say? That what do you say? My brother's wife is he not my sister-in-law? No, no, no. no. My yeah, about like my she's, brother's wife, but like they don't. 
uh, that's a, you know, let's not get into relationships. We had a, <laughs> there was a talk earlier, and I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're now, uh, um, All right, so backing up. So backing up. Uh, Laugh Factory. So it, with a twin, apparently. That I was 21 years old. 21 at the time. Okay. You and your tw- did you you and your twin do stand up together? The first time, no, we didn't. Oh, okay. Okay. So here's the thing that they ran back in that time when I was 21. Uh, geez, don't even ask me what year it was. Uh, Subtract 19. He, that's funny. Uh. I'm 41, so if you want to do the math, go ahead. Okay, God subtract 20. Subtract 20. 2000, 2000. that's easy math. Okay, I, that's still a lot for me. <laughs> so basically what happened was is they, they were do it where it was kind of like a potluck type of thing. Okay. So like the first, but except they did it by order. So it's first come, first serve. So it's not really so it's a not potluck, potluck, it's a sign up. <laughs> so I totally lied to you guys. Uh, I, listen, it was a long time ago. I barely remember it. He's in but I 40s. do remember we were literally like towards the end of it. So me and my brother actually got to go on and people were like mad. They're like, why don't you guys do it together? But we knew now it's like, well, because they want us to share a number. Um, uh. Yeah. And so we, we went on, cause here's the thing. They picked the first 20 at the time and you go up, you do three minutes, three minutes. Um, and then it had to be clean. 100% clean. 100% clean. Innuendos, no innuendos. No innuendo. If you even started talking anything that sounded sexually, they would cut your mic off and they would kick you off immediately. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know how you're going to do it. But like, <laughs> I'm, good. Like, I'm good. I've been preparing for this for 21 years. I'm the good twin. I'm the good twin. Everyone knows I'm the good twin. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Shout out to Raul. Uh, <laughs> I, no matter what podcast I'm on, I have to shout out my brother. All right. Oh, so that's your brother. That's my twin brother. Okay. His name's Raul. Yeah, I've never heard you talk about your brother being a twin at all. Like, this is... I'm this full is of surprises. N- yeah, right? <laughs> okay, all right. So you, 21-year-old. Yeah. You're at the Laugh Factory. You win your twin. What was, like... Everyone's talked about, I want to do this. And right. I never do it. Until one day, something clicks. What was it that was like, Laugh Factory tonight, let's go do it? Well, like, this was literally our 21st birthday. Okay, okay. And this was one of those moments where we were like, dude, if we don't do it now, we're never going to mm-hmm. do it. And I already knew that. I'm like, if I don't do it now, we only had talked about it for years, you know. So if we yeah. don't get it done right now, it's not going to happen. You know, why am I going to waste my time, whatever. Um, and so we went, we got on the list, and I was like, it's go time. Like, this is, it's either we're going to do this or we're not going to do this. And there was like a moment Right before, like, they called us to verify that we were there, and they're like, all right, Chris, Ross, Ring, okay, you guys are here, cool. You know, wait right here till we call on you guys, whatever. Uh-huh. And I remember my brother was so nervous. He was so scared. Anxious, yeah. I was... he, he looked at me, and he was literally like, they're like, they pointed at him, they're like, you're next. And he goes, Chris. <laughs> like, but not like Chris. Like, it was more like, Chris, do you want to run the fuck out of here? And I was like, you got Found this. Immediately he looks at the waitress and he's like, Beer, can I have a beer? Can I have a uh-huh. beer over here, please? And uh so he just downed one and he was like, All right, I'm just gonna go up. He went up and his time literally went like that. I by the time he got off, he looked like he saw a ghost. Like his he so you, got, you guys didn't even look twins no more. Yeah, we That's don't <laughs> we're like, How's one white? And then the other one is like kind of brownish, like I don't get it. Um so and that and honestly, here's the truth. Uh, my phone, to be honest with you. If he had been like, dude, let's get the fuck out of here, I was going to be like, hey, oh, yeah, this is what we'll so, try on year 22. So <laughs> we'll, you, we'll you were back. just waiting for the words to come out of yes, his mouth. Okay. Yes. And the, the thing is, it never came out. And, and I asked him, I've, I've asked him about it. So I'm like, what, like, why? I knew you, I saw the fear in your eye. What made you be like, let's do it? And he was like, there was no question that I was going to do it. But it was more like, oh my God, I'm, this is, I've never been uh, this scared in my life. It's like a bungee jumping. It was like, like a bungee jumping. Like, I don't want to do this, yeah. but I'm going to. But here's the thing I'll say about like doing stand-up. I feel like you'll know immediately from the first time you do stand-up if you're going to keep doing it. Yeah. I remember the first time I did it. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel great, obviously, first time. It doesn't always. And here I am. I'm still going. I'm still doing it, working on it. Because you can tell like either I'm going to keep pursuing this or – Ah, it's not for me. Yeah. You you know mm-hmm. right away if it's for you or it's not for you. Right, me. right. You got to have thick skin too with yourself. When you realize you did crappy, right. when you realize that joke, maybe you thought it's funny, the crowd doesn't, or maybe it's a f- more offensive than you thought. Right. You got to rework it, get back, come back, do it better. 
it's be gone. I, and I think that's kind of one of the lessons that I learned. And it obviously it took me a long ass fucking time to learn it. Uh, I've been doing comedy off and on for fucking 20 years. Uh, so, okay. So when you did the laugh factory in your 21st birthday, how prepared were you? Did you actually, that, at that one, I was so first prepared. One. I was so prepared, bro. Cause I had, and here was the thing. It, it was like still fresh in my mind. The thing that got me with it was I was kind of hype about like, I'm really excited to tell this joke. Or to get at that time, I like I was like I didn't know exactly what stand up was, mm-hmm. but I knew I had a couple ideas that I'm like this makes me laugh. Okay, and that's good. I'm gonna do that. I'm glad you said that. You didn't know what stand up was because I didn't know really. Yeah, I saw specials. I never been to a mic. I never right. nothing. So, in your head, what you envisioned it was gonna be like mm-hmm. versus what it actually was like. How far off were you? What did you think was gonna happen? Um, I thought they were gonna carry me out of the. <laughs> Out of the laugh factory on people's shoulders. Uh, I thought they were all going to be like, look it. I thought Jamie Masada, who's the owner of the laugh factory, was going to be like, buddy, you you got it. You're the one. <laughs> come, uh, come back next week. Headline. <laughs> only because when I got off, like, I, w- I didn't have, I, I'm in no way saying, like, I had the best set or whatever. But I had a decent enough set to where, in my mind, I'm like, what am I doing here? I'm out of here. I should be doing podcasts right now. What are podcasts? And like, I looked into the future and I was like, this is what I'm going to be doing. Like I already knew. Uh, and then here's the thing. Uh, it never gets better. <laughs> it, no, <laughs> it really doesn't. You try. It goes up and down. That's the it's thing a roller I've coaster. Learned. It's a roller coaster. So you definitely, if you want to do it, I can, I think that's what I meant by like, that's the first time you do it is the, is the time where you realize and it clicks in your head. Either mm-hmm. you're going to be like, you know what? Yeah. There'll be a day when it comes where I'll be like, I'm done with this, or you're gonna be like, Nah, I'm gonna keep doing this until somebody's like, You suck, get off, please. don't do this again. And like, even then, you're probably gonna be like, All right, still I'll be it. back next week. Right? <laughs> I'll see you next week. So does does your brother still do comedy? He doesn't. He doesn't. Well, why well, not? Well, here's the thing. I know he still has the itch for it. Yesterday, he sent me like a, a whole list of like new jokes he had wrote. So he's doing behind the scene work then. Yeah, he's, he's writing doing, stuff, he, but he's not ready to go up on stage. Mm, probably not back on stage. He always that that uh, stage fright never left him. And that that's definitely a thing. I don't think it. I don't think it ever leaves anyone I don't personally. Think so either. But you deal with it better. Yeah, you learn to manage it. I, I think when I go on stage, it's an it's an acting. Um, you're acting confident. You're selling your character because if you haven't found your voice yet, you're going on stage. You're just talking. Um, Right. And that's horrible acting. Then you find your voice and it's not even acting anymore. It's just you're being you. You're being whoever you are. And you got to sell yourself. Yeah. I think when people say finding your voice, they mean actually being who you are mm-hmm. authentically. Right. Um, still trying to find it. Yeah. I'm definitely still. <laughs> I feel like on. there's a lot of people who, I mean, they, I've, I, I've seen people have success with what they've done. And then out of nowhere, it's like a. They're like not the same person. It's like, whoa, whoa, dude, you were so confident last week. What happened? No, I'm fucking garbage or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's a constant struggle. And it's then a you're a very mental game. Uh, definitely, definitely. But I think because I know your your po- I've heard the first one by the way. Hey, the whole thing? Yeah, it was really good. The whole hour? Yeah, I the whole hour, the whole hour. You didn't fucking listen to I it. I swear to God, I did. And you, you thought it was no? Nah. Well, only because yeah. I. Had. Because um, <laughs> like, Adam was on there. Yeah, I was like, Adam's on here. Let me fucking fuck with this. And that's I'll why I got this. it. <laughs> that's why I got him on it. <laughs> and then I was like, I was like, Johnny. Well, that's, I mean, that's good. Because like, I'm not no, gonna I'm lie, uh, though. We had technical if, issues setting up. Like, uh, I was trying to use a laptop, trying to use the two mics. It didn't work out. Well, I noticed now uh, you got the video. You didn't yeah. have the video earlier. No, I had a, like I had a camera, but it stopped at 12 minutes, and I wasn't gonna get up. And, and like, right. we were already having difficulties. I'm just like, whatever. We're just gonna. My mind was like, ugh. Got you. But I'm glad you listened to it. Did you find anything useful in advice? You know what? I did. What, did, um, what was it? And I think that's one of the things why I, if people are, I'm sure people, some people are thinking like, why the fuck don't you stop? You Maybe you should stop. It's been 20 years. But to me, it's like, why would I stop something that I enjoy doing mm-hmm. for your pleasure? You know what I mean? I never yeah, got no. into this thinking like, I want to please other, that, that was a weird thing. Like, I never was like, oh, I want to be fucking famous. Fame no. was never like. So what? What is it? Me. What is it? Why do you do it then? Like, what is your ultimate goal? I, I've said this before, but I'm always in search of that one joke that I'm like, I'm. I love this because I would used to write things that I I would look at and I'll be like, I cannot wait to say this. So, if if I'm understanding you, you don't care about the fame. No. But no, what no. you care about is to be 
uh, immortalized some way somehow with a joke. Like you want decades from now being like, oh, hey, have you the heard this joke you from this guy? You like, do want fame. No. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It's not even from like a, a point of like, oh, everybody loved this joke. It's more the fact that I feel like in myself, I know I can come up with something that's like, okay, that's good. And I, I think of, uh, I think about that too. There's a lot of material that people do. Like I don't like to do dating jokes because a lot of people do dating jokes. I get it. You can do it differently and yeah. yours might do it better. Right. But I don't really want to because everybody does it. I get that. But, I get that because there are certain subjects you're like, do I want to do this? I've just been done to death. Yeah. Right. And then um, you want to find your, you're trying to find your voice. You're trying to stay real to yourself. You're trying to do storytelling jokes. So you got to talk about life experience. And if you don't know, you don't know. You can sure you can make up some stuff and make it funny. Right. So when you started out, what did, what did you, what did you talk about? Okay. See, here's okay, that's, that's a very good question. Cause actually when I started out, I did a lot of stuff that was, um, just made up. Okay. Okay. I've done a couple made up stuff, like very far fetched. What was, uh, what's something you can remember? Okay. I'll, I'll give you my first joke that I ever wrote. Uh, oh, hang on. Everybody listen. Exclusive. I hope I you will not it. find this on his podcast. You won't. Uh, <laughs> This is how long ago it was. Is I, I go, I go, man, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry if I feel a little down, like, cause I just had a, a fight, um, with a girl, and, like, I, I don't feel bad about it, cause you know she's in the hospital. I feel bad because you know it's my grandma, Dang. and I'm like, grandma, like you should have like, pretended to stay sleeping. That's what you should have did. That's what you fucking get. And that obviously I didn't beat the shit out of my grandma. I mean, oh wow, okay. But that was the first <laughs> joke that I ever wrote that I was like, I can't wait to say this in front of strangers. So okay, um, so for anybody out there who's thinking about doing comedy, because this is where my thought first went. Uh, I like Anthony Jeselnik's style, his humor, um, Tosh Pointo. Oh, I think my generation saw them a lot. The darker so, stuff. So, is that what you mean? Yeah. So okay. dark humor, stuff like. Grandma, you should just stay down. So I want to beat your ass and be in the hospital. Yeah. We find it funny because it's a little absurd, and that's I, what I was shooting for. Right. And I talked to Adam, and he, he's all he's you know since you're a hero of his. Uh, but I talked to him, and he, even his his old material he showed me, it was that du- stuff that he's like, oh, like everybody does this. I get you know I get it. Yeah. When well, did when did you when you write jokes like w- you okay. were writing dark? When did you realize maybe this isn't me? Because I have never heard you do anything like that now. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, well, here's the thing. I, I only went by, like, the comics that I was like, I love that style. I want to keep doing that. Like, for me at that time, it was Wendy Lieberman or Wendy Liebman. Hilarious. Hilarious. She was just, to me, I was like, it, everything she wrote, I was like, that is funny. Like, that's funny. And, and it's all a lot of outlandish embellishments uh-huh, uh-huh, of things uh-huh. that, like, I don't believe it. It's not. It's, it's funny to think about. Yeah, to me, it's, it's not plausible, but yes, it's funny. Yes, to me, the absurdity is funny to me. And that's what I like about those jokes. It's so crazy. Like, you can't get offended by something that can never happen. Right. If you think this is like you have like mental problems, if you really think that mm-hmm. you know, like I want to beat the shit out of my grandma, like, <laughs> right? Maybe one time, but she had to come in. That's true. <laughs> I mean, she did a lot of shit. I think later on is when I was like, well, let me examine this more. And I would talk about like how my grandma would, uh, there was one cause she was a raging alcoholic. That was like the thing. So that's why I didn't really feel too bad about doing that joke. And, uh, one day she blew up on me and like my brothers, but she did in a way that was like, she turned into this clairvoyant of like alcohol, alcoholism to where one day in the car, she was like, Oh, you're a thief. You're a fat greedy lardo. She pointed at me. Uh, <laughs> And uh, you, you'll never be nothing. Like, she went down the line wow, of, like, just, me and my brothers and my cousin. She brought out her notes, like, oh, oh you, yeah, she, you. everything she was holding on to for years. She just, like, I'm going to kick it tomorrow, so I'm going to tell you the truth. Yeah, pretty much. She was like, I'm going to let you guys have it. Like, She's like, and your, your neighbors are witches. And she, like, literally threw everyone under the bus. Damn, Grandma. So I kind of, I went on stage with that. And that, I felt like, I think I... I resonated with that because it was like, well, I'm telling something that did happen. Right. You feel personally. Yeah. You feel the emotions. Yeah. You embellish a little bit. Cause like you said, you didn't beat your grandma. I, yes. I, but I still like, about. yeah, mm-hmm. I still like the idea of mm-hmm. like absurdities. Right. Okay. So like, um, this is something I've been recently thinking about, like what should we not joke about? Um, and we covered a little bit on your podcast when you asked me like a joke, I regret. Yeah. So yeah. as you've been doing it for like on and off for 20 years, when you were writing, when did you or how did you 
realized this is not something I should joke about, no matter how funny it is. I, I think every person should ask themselves that question. Um, so what was it for you? When did you like, here's the truth. I, I never wanted to do comedy to hurt other people's feelings. But you kind of did with some Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. There, were, there were times yeah, now that. where I'll that. say some shit and immediately after I'll be like, wow, why did I? Oh, yeah, that was firsthand experience of that one. Yeah, time. firsthand experience of that. Um, so you think people should stay away from that kind of stuff when no, you no. do? No, no, find out where you're comfortable with. So That's okay. my answer. Find out where you're comfortable with. If, if There's some comics that say some things that I'm like, wow, I don't know how you say that because I would never. But if they yes. pull it off because they're comfortable with it. Comfortable, definitely. It's a big factor. If you're not comfortable with what you're saying, Why are you it's, not saying gonna, it's not going to be funny. Yeah. One. They're not going to believe it. Nope. And you just, you look bad. Yeah. You, you look very bad. I've had some jokes where I'm like, I like it. Because like I said, I, I idolize com- certain comedians. Okay. And I realized. Because I remember the first podcast you mentioned, like, you would give some cringy, like, jokes where they, I think you said, like, the co- best compliment you got was when people were like, "Oh," and you're like, "Yeah." And I like, and I like it. I do like <laughs> no, it, I but that. I realized I'm not those comedians, and it's a lot of work to act and have that voice, and it's not really me. I idolize it, I love it, yeah, but it's not me. And, and I think that's what I meant with the whole Wendy Liebman thing, is I I appreciated her comedy to the point where I was like, well, I don't want to be her, but I can appreciate yeah the style that she's doing. Right. So any new comedian out there, like. If they're going to a mic, um, we've got different experiences here, but should they should they go in mind with, I like this comedian, I like this kind of comedy, so I'm going to do this kind of comedy, or should they just throw it out the window and just do you? What, and even if and it happens to be idolizing them in some way, go ahead. In, in my opinion, and which honestly doesn't mean shit, uh, do, it, do it, play with it. Mm-hmm. Play with it. I think one of the things that even now, like I'll get small little tidbits that I'm like, I'm going to take that with me. Adam said something on your podcast that I was like, I'm going to take that with me for us. I'm, I'm so glad that first episode had such an impact on you. Cause I it was did. It really the, did. the whole time. I, I'm, I'm not like, kidding uh, either. No, he's given me a lot of advice and that's why I like n- new comedians. Like I didn't know anything. I know about the scene. Uh, to me, that was one of the things that I, I totally agree with. I was like, yes, yes. Is nobody tells you like, oh yeah, by the way, this is the way you probably should. Yeah, they're just like go hey, about it or whatever. Set. I like yeah. that joke. Yeah, it's not. It's, hey, I like that joke, but maybe have you thought about this? Right, right. Uh, or if it does come, it comes far and few between. Mm-hmm. And the other one is uh, Marcus Dietz, actually, a uh, good friend of mine. Um, yeah, he's gonna be on the next still, episode uh, actually, you know. unless he goes out of town. Exclusiveness coming up later. We'll talk about well, that. He, on his. he might talk about it, but uh, okay. Gonna. So, so here's the thing. He said something literally last week that made me think of things differently because I had been in this slump recently before COVID started where I was like, yeah. I didn't feel it the same when I went on stage and I could feel it. I could, there's sometimes uh-huh. you could feel like I'm not being me on stage. I, I was going through that too. And I think, I think COVID taking a break made everyone kind of sit back, yep, reevaluate. Reset. Yeah. And then, yep. I agree. And, uh, what, uh, what, what was this tip or advice that you took away from Adam? I need to, I oh, think the I'll viewers want to know. Yeah, that's true. Adam had said, um, he had said something like where he did a bit was he would say it over and over again and he would say it differently. Now, here's the thing. When I first started, that's what I did. But you don't do that now. But I don't do that now. So what's your process now? Well, see, he kind of reminded me like, oh, yeah, when it was, when I did feel like, okay, now this is working or now I'm trying. That's what I did. And then it kind of just rem- reminded me like, wait, why did I stop doing that? Because Here's the thing. I never had a problem with it. Every time I went up, I felt like I gave it a shot. So what is your process now? Uh, it's a lot of, I'll think of a, an idea because mm-hmm. of where I work, there's a lot of downtime kind of. Where I get you, that. Uh, I work at the post office. Government jobs. A. And uh, the thing with that is there's a lot of time where it just, you literally can put on headphones and just zone out, which I've done that a lot. And um Oh yeah, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to this. We got a live okay. audience member um, here who's got who's questions for us. Got questions, and so um, I would I would often be like, think of like just funny things because we can't help. At it the just happens. We yeah. find it funny, and, and I would always like to be like, all right, what, why 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 does that make me giggle so much? Like, there's a bit that I'm working on now that I just told Marcus about today. I don't know why. If you come to the dive bar, you'll hear it uh, Monday, but Monday nights. 
Flamingo. Well, you. Well, no, it's probably in Vegas. You know what? Yeah. Well, I don't know when you're gonna release this too, so I should probably not say that. But listen, there's a new bit I'm working on that I think that's kind of what you want to do. You want to have those things that you want to talk about that you're like, oh, I can't wait to say this. Yeah. And if you you have to feel excited about your jokes. Yeah. If you don't feel excited, you're not gonna be comfortable. Right. And you're not having fun. You're not. And that was the other thing that Adam said is like. Like, remember, we're here to have fun. Right, right. Um, so real quick, because um, we got the studio member in the audience asking this question. What, what was it that Marcus said to you that reignited you? Um, it, and I know he meant this not the way that. Um, no, I don't need a preface. I want to hear I want to hear it raw. Okay, this I is what hear it was. Raw. Because I last Monday, um, for those of you who don't know, the we comedy had just come back to uh, Nevada. Like what, October 5th? Yeah, fifth. It was a fifth. And it was the dive bar uh, again. And I actually had the day off. Uh, that's the other thing is I, I have so many weird work schedules where I can only do it when I can do it. Gotcha. So, so anyways, uh, so I get off stage and I'm like, ah, it was okay for not doing it for like eight, nine months. You know, that we had. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, which so. A lot of us got rust. Oh, definitely. Yeah, you could tell I was definitely that. Um, but I was still like, you know what, fuck it. I got to get through this to get back to where I was before as far as like, I'm going to figure this out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to figure this out. And uh, we get in the car and I asked Marcus, which I really don't do. But this time I was like, I wanted his genuine feedback. So I was like, dude, what do you think? Like, give me notes, please. And he just said something so like simple that it literally made me think about it. And I was like, hey, you're fucking right. What did he say? I got to know. What did he say? He goes, he, he literally just looked at me and he goes, and try harder and i was like damn and like it blew my, it's like one of those moments that because here's the thing like about that specific question is people could poo poo that question but here's the thing that question was so open-ended i had to come up with the answer for that question i don't, I don't think that's open-ended that just means try harder put more no. effort into it yeah Write better but, jokes okay but to whose effort it's that's why it got me. That's why it was like, that's true. Oh, it's, fuck, it is right. your effort. You have to try harder. That's exactly what I thought. So that's yeah. why I was like, you know what? You're, you're kind of right. And that with the whole Adams uh, thing of like, I try it this way. It made me think like, fuck, I haven't done that. I haven't been like, you know what? I'm going to talk about, you know, this baby being called an asshole at the pool, <laughs> but I didn't, that's another bit that I'm working on. And, oh, but I didn't do it with like, uh, with the, the, uh, the, the webbles that it believed that it should have gotten. And, and I felt it too, mm -hmm. which is why I was like, you know what? You're absolutely fucking right. Sometimes look, if you have criticism, that's like, um, not mean spirited. I feel like you should definitely get, you, ha you should, you, were, you, were you should say least, yes, because nobody knows, you know, no, like we perceive things one way, right? We go up on stage, we hear ourselves, but we don't hear ourselves, right? Because we're saying something and we're in the moment. Well, that's another thing. And too. people should just be like, hey, you know, here's my criticism. Right. And if it is simply try harder, I think that just means like you could do better. And yeah. You're not pushing yourself. And I don't think that's a bad comment. No, I get. didn't take it that way either, which oh, I no. didn't think he meant it like try harder. No, I think it he sees the potential like, yeah, and he's like, try harder. Yeah. He, it was more like you didn't execute that the way I know you wanted to, which mm -hmm. I totally agree yeah. with. I was like, you know what? You're fucking right. Um, and I think uh, as far as like, it, cause, okay, so like we're we're talking about like the progression of like how I got to where I'm at now. There was a time mm -hmm. where, um, yeah, I was like, I want to do stuff that's more real, but there was a time right before that where I was like, I'm just going to do self deprecating. Um, yeah. That, and, that and here's the thing that it, where I learned as far as like point of view, I didn't see myself the way other people saw me. No, I don't think anyone really does. Um, yeah. And I, I had to learn that. Yeah. Cause I would go on stage and I would be like, yeah, I'm so fat, guys. I'm so fat. My dick doesn't work. And like, you know what I mean? To and where it's, it's it's funny. Yeah, but it's to a to a point. To a point. Yeah, because I I would get people to come up to me and be with, and they would say, why why are you saying that? Like that's not that's not true. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm fat as fuck. You know what I mean? And like it, we and, we don't see ourselves <laughs> the way other people right. see. Us. Like when your mom says you're handsome, you're like, you just saying that because you're my mom. First of all, mom, you're right. But second of all. Why are none of all, these I'm other not, girls? I'm not going to believe my mom because one day my mom said, well, handsome. And the next day she says, you ugly like your dad. <laughs> and then she'll make a joke <laughs> about like your dad's off. the mailman. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know what to believe from you. <laughs> right. Then you get a, a, a DNA test from uh, Ancestry. And, and, and it's like, not of them. Huh. 
literally nothing of my dad. No one in my family has curly hair, and I do. <laughs> so like when when I grew my hair out, uh-huh. I think I think when I was growing up, she said she always told me don't grow your hair; out. it looks bad. Cut it. And when I got older, um, within this last year, if you saw my hair, it got long and it got curly. You're like, fuck it, I'm gonna go full Joker. No, <laughs> that was later on. But I realized it got curly, and then I, it hit me. All those times my mom made that joke about the mailman being my dad. It maybe it was true. Yeah, no <laughs> one's got curly hair. Like, <laughs> That's so funny. Because I, I did do the ancestry thing. And I was like, hell yeah, I can't wait to hear that. I'm like 5%. Native American so I could talk shit to all these white people. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm indigenous. Mother. Yeah, I'm like, please give a reason why my last name is the way it is. <laughs> and uh, it turns out I was partially right. <laughs> but what are you? What are what's your? Well, uh, okay, forty nine percent of me is actually native to the Americas. It said, but a part of it was like Jalisco, which I was like, I I did not expect that. Um, and then like. 39% of it was, like, Spaniard. I'm like, son of a bitch, like... Well, I mean, like, most Mexicans and Latinos in general are part Spaniard. Yeah, but got, they're, they're know, usually taller. Uh, they got green eyes or blue eyes or some shit. I mean, the I didn't pure get none of that. Are... First of all, this chair is lower, so don't let that confuse you guys of why yeah. Johnny's up here and I'm, he like, got right the here, good, okay? He got the good chair, and I'm the, I'm the host. And he Where got am I place? That's, all that's I mean. true. That's fine. So, that's fine. Okay. This is my chair. So. All right. So, okay. So, um... Question. You've been doing this on and off for 20 years. Yeah. And I didn't. Okay. Here's the other thing. This is why I have a part time with like saying like, oh, I did it. I didn't do it continuously that whole time. Well, I mean, that's I want to say the last two years, three years since I moved to Vegas. Okay. I took okay. it more seriously. Well, here's the question. Um, what makes you come back? Because if I stop doing something, I start thinking like, well, why did I stop? Oh, because of X, Y, and Z. Because I haven't found what I was looking for yet. Okay. That joke. Okay. That I want someone to be like. So you're about. I you're, fucking you're, wish I had that fucking You're joke. truly about the craft. That's what yeah, keeps you back. Yeah. The challenge. You want to find this joke. Yeah. But I, I think with the new things that I learn all the time, especially like I got, like I told you, I kept stopping because of certain things that happened in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm finally at a point in my life where I can take a little bit of time that I do have. To focus on this. To focus on it. Okay. All the and time. Give it a real shot. All the times you took a break. Mm-hmm. Do you regret having to take a break? Yeah, or, definitely. Or Be- the question, like, do you wish you didn't take that break or did you benefit some way from the break? The only thing that I feel like I benefited from the break was that it made me more patient. And you um, got to have patience to do this. You have you, to have patience. You're not going to walk in one day at the Laugh Factory and be like, hey, headline right. every night. Well, here's the thing. You got to remember, not everyone, you're not for everyone. No. You but got, here's uh, the thing. You don't have to be. Nope. You don't have to be. There's 7 billion people in the world. Yeah, not all of them are going to like you. And here's the thing. Why would you want them all to? Like, you know For your I mean? self-esteem? Uh, I mean, those people are usually jaded. Now, here's the thing. Look, I feel like you want all of them to like you? Really? <laughs> yes. No, I can't. I can't. My insecurities. Because I feel like most of them are, are, those are fake likes then. Hey. Um, and here's the thing. Like, you're going to get people who are going to tell you, oh, fucking this guy, why does he? You're not doing things for them. You're doing no. things for you. And I feel like that's what I have to keep reminding myself. Okay. So when you're doing shows. Because they're um, not all haters. So when you're doing shows, you're, you're getting booked. Mm-hmm. How important is that to you to get booked? Because you're, you, you like the you, you the craft for yourself. Right. Obviously, you don't want to just do open mics your whole life. No, definitely not. I mean, I, I can appreciate mics because it lets you play. And I like that. Mm-hmm. I still like the fact. I think that's why I, I don't see myself not doing open mics. Right. No matter what, where I'm at in as far as comedy. Uh, only because it does let you play around. You get to try things out that. Yeah, that you, you wouldn't normally do in front of a crowd. Yeah, like in front of a crowd, I do have jokes that I'm like, okay, I know these will yeah, hit or whatever. I've heard some of those jokes. Yeah. They're pretty and, good. Uh, and Oh, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. Uh, and I feel like. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable. I, I, that's what I would say to anybody who's like thinking about it is do what makes you feel comfortable, but also do something that you're excited about. Right. So the whole topic of this podcast then has been being comfortable. Right. After or 20, have fun and have fun. So after 20 years of doing this um, on and off, mm-hmm. are you comfortable? Are you having fun all the time or are you still finding that? It, to be honest with you, it comes and it goes. But right now, I'm having fun again. That's good. I'm having fun again. And I'm generally excited uh, only because I, it's been so long since I had that feeling of I can't wait to tell 
people mm. about how I'm going to beat the shit out of my grandma. It was that level of, cause I'm working on these new bits that I'm like, I, now I feel like I'm getting back to the original writing that I was doing before. Uh, but in a way that's authentic to me. Right. Do you, what is the process of writing for you now? Um, I, I take elements of what I used to do with things that I do now. Cool. So like one is like, I'll have a thought in my head, right? Okay. That's where it starts usually. And yeah. And it com- inspiration comes from anywhere. Like the whole baby thing that literally happened. Um, Babies are assholes. I could have yeah. told you that dude. could have told you that years ago. Well, I was, I, I was in the pool here. Well, you got kids. <laughs> I do have kids. And it took you now. Well, I mean, I've called my kids assholes, but that's like in my head, you know, but okay. this dude did it out loud. <laughs> This dude was like that, you little asshole. Like, and but it was one of those things where he didn't mean to like say it. It, uh, it was like you. Yeah, mm. like it just came out. He was like you little, cause he. Here's the thing. In our pool, they have like pillows, right, with the little um, seating areas, and he didn't expect the baby to just grab the pillow and like literally he launched it into the pool. It hit some lady, uh, and he was like you little asshole. I would have said it to them. And I was like. The first thought I thought was like, beat that baby's ass. Um, fight, fight. Yeah, which I, which is weird. It surprised me because I was like, wow, I never advocate beating baby's asses. But he, I mean, where did that come from? Like that, it's, it, it kind of scared me. But then it was like, it made me laugh. It, and it, to the point where the guy heard that I laughed and immediately he was embarrassed. He was like, um, I'm just like, kidding. Like, just kid joking. Left. So those are the things where like, okay, I take something like that and I go, okay, how can I say this in a stand-up format that resonates, but also um, people could see it clearly. Yeah. Um, you definitely don't want to put the image that you hate babies. Because that's the other thing. You, sometimes you... You say you things and yeah, people you're like, it. Oh, shit, I just made myself look like an asshole. Because like, uh, I don't w- want to beat babies, but the idea of beating a baby is absurdity. Yeah, it's funny. It's, that I hope comes across as I don't mean this. Especially if you lose to the baby. Yeah, especially uh-huh. if you lose a baby, like put his head under the water just for like a little bit, just enough just to scare him. Baptize him. That's what it is. Yeah. And then you go, you're with Jesus now. Don't throw more pillows. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's a little bit of a, a give and take, uh, but right. that's probably like my main process. And then as far as like the way I'm doing it now is like, I am going to try harder now as far as like, because I do remember like repeating things over and like trying to different with a different inflection. I, I, uh, I do that still. Um, I feel like I'm I, getting more into that. I, uh, a lot of times I will work in on the joke as I'm driving to the mic. Okay. And I'm just saying it in my head over and over and out loud and I'm recording it and I'm always throwing a new tag in there and a new tag and I forget this other tag and a new tag and the variations. By the time I get to the mic, I'm like, I like this one the best. That's the I, dragon you always chase. Is yeah. you like, how do I remember every single tag mm-hmm. That because a lot of times I end up because this is the whole train thing is I would get off stage and be like, I didn't do that one tag. Yep, I forgot that tag. And I've uh, I've said it on the other podcast. I feel like if you forget it, wasn't that good. But or you just didn't try harder. You didn't try harder. Um, But that's uh, that's it could just be forgetfulness. Um, That's that joke could have been. I have horrible memory. That is the other thing. I mean that joke could have been killer. But I feel like if you said it. A hundred times rehearsing and you still forgot it. Right. You didn't really want to say it. That's true. Cause I mean, I mean, I could have said drown that baby and that would have been killer. Should have just baptized that baby. He's going to baptize that baby for pretty good. For good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Can I have that? Um, yeah, man, go ahead. Cool. Go ahead. It's, um, your, it's your joke, not mine. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't have a baptized element to it. I was not this looking is, at it religiously. Now, now we're, now we're creating content together. You know, I got this. A joke writing. Exclusive. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay so, let me ask you something real quick then. Okay. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So as because we, I love the idea of sharing processes because this is gonna help somebody. Somebody's gonna listen to this and get a piece of it that they're like, uh-huh. I don't know about the other shit, but I do like this. Okay. One of the other things that I used to do before I would go on stage, before I knew, like, okay, I got this show coming up. Um, this is a paid show or whatever, or it's not. I used to play a certain playlist to pump myself up okay, because I, I like the energy of me, like being like, okay, I'm in it now. And, and that's what I would do. Um, and I feel like I'm kind of starting to bring that back. Like I even have some of the same songs that I used to play. Okay. Um, one was like Jay Z's, uh, big pimpin'. So that's to show you how long ago it was. Like, 
and it always gave me like, okay, I'm about, I'm about to tell you this whole audience of how small my dick is. Let's go. Like, <laughs> big pimping with a little dick. <laughs> little dick, let's go. So do you do you have like a little um, routine? Routine that you're like, warm up I routine? gotta do no, my thing. No, I don't. Um, I'll, I'll Other be, than like. I'll be listening to music in the car because I'm always listening to my music. Right. You know. What is your music? I don't uh, even know. It's a lot of pop. Of Pop punk emo music from the 2000s. Okay, okay. As you know, look, look at my hair. You can't, if you can't tell. Well, I thought you would have been more like a metal dude. I listen to, to a little metal, but more pop punk, more emo. Okay. I okay. listen to a little metal. But no, I don't have a routine. I get in the car, turn on my music. Mm -hmm. I start driving to the mic. Um, sometimes I'm in a good mood, so I put on my specific playlist. Okay. But most of the time, I'm just doing the jokes in my head, and so I'll turn the music down. Are you doing TikTok dance type? <sighs> I can tell you don't follow me, dick. <laughs> Um, I'm not doing the dances. I'm Wait, not... are you, you're on TikTok? Yeah, I've been on TikTok. I didn't even know you were on TikTok. Wow, you don't even watch my stories on Instagram. I heard, <laughs> listen. You I don't heard... follow my post. Wow. Well, you don't have Adam enough on it. I'm like, put Adam on, please. So that way. Wow. No, you know, wow. I'm, kidding, I'm, kidding. I'm gonna hit up Adam and be like, dude, I'm, I don't want to hang out with you to hang out with you anymore. I want to hang out with you to get more views from the people we both know. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, uh, I've, been, I've been on TikTok for a while. Um, well, I don't go uh, on it that much. I, I, in my defense. Like, in my, in, I don't, I go on maybe a couple of days and not go off for like a week. Okay. Or maybe um, it's, it's. Okay, here's the thing. Here's, well, here's my thing. Okay, go With ahead. social media, mm -hmm. I really don't care for it. That's what we're going into. Good. That's exactly what I was going to say. I like say. to go just to scroll for the memes, look at pictures, and I don't care to post me. Like, I don't really do selfies. And everything I do now is forced because in today's world, Exposure, which is the business. Yeah. I mean, this is still it's, a business. It's not like and the past. I get that. Yeah, it's not like the past where you go on a show, you do a killer, and they recommend you. Right. Oh, it, oh, it doesn't the, matter. Then they like, promote you on the radio. Remember or that, guys. Nowadays, is you it's have business. to expose yourself. Yeah, and you have to put yourself out there, yeah. and which I, I feel like most comics are horrible at. I, I, Some I are am, really I good am, at. I am it, horrible. I hate doing it. I really, if it, I, I hate doing it. Well, okay, why do you hate it though? I just I don't it doesn't it doesn't connect with me. Like, do, you, do you feel like you're not being authentic? Yes and no. Like I like candid shots. I like taking candid pictures mm. of friends and doing stuff, shows. That makes sense. So when I have to do it to myself, I'm like, it's not, you know. The take doing the TikTok stuff, trying to be creative. I'm good at snowballing on an idea. I'm you know? glad you put the last part into it because snowballing could have been something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a fucking pervert, I'm sorry. But I, I I'm better with snowballing an idea. You you give like the you give me a babies are assholes. I'll give you a baptism. I'll give you something else. You know. Okay, I see. What but you mean. me coming up with babies are assholes is the hard part. Well, I mean, I feel like that's been done to death too. I do. I mean, I did have a joke about babies like the toddlers are just little shits. Well, that's the other thing too is you don't want to you know actually do anything that. It's been done before, but also you want to be true. Like that really did happen. Yeah, I, I actually I did a joke about toddlers, how they want their mom's attentions, mm -hmm. so the little shits about it or parents because they'll be like, mom, 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 watch me do this, and then watch me do this car wheel, and all they do is spin around, and the parents are like, oh my god, that was so amazing, and I'm just like, no, I'm fucking lot of him. All he did was spin around. Don't congratulate. Don't say he did a car wheel. He's, <laughs> you know, you're gonna hype him up. And, I could do that shit. Watch yeah. this. But uh, and then like a week, two weeks later. A friend on Instagram sent me a post okay. from someone else. Those exact words. Toddlers will be like, watch me do a car wheel. And then they spin around. Okay. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Because there is a lot of people that will a, everyone's just. Gonna, yeah, everyone's going to share an experience. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're gonna share the exact same experience with someone else because. Well, I think that's, that's the thing I, I like about stand-up is you can't really get away with that. And like everyone shares an experience, but it's how you tell it. Yeah, because, we can have the same joke, mm -hmm. um, and probably wouldn't be a good idea doing them together. Right. But we can have the same joke, but I can hit mine differently. I can do different punchlines. I can do a different tag than you. Right. And they still both might be great. Right. But I personally, I don't want to go that route. I want to have stuff that I remember for. I don't want to be in a conversation like, oh, you know, Chris, he does his joke. Oh yeah, Giant does a joke like that too. I can't be. I can't talk about babies drowning because Chris does his bit. I uh, know, right? Now I gotta like. Talk about overfeeding them or something. No, I get it. Um, and and but you can't. Let, here's the thing though, too. Don't let none of that stop you because you you you're mm -hmm. gonna come up with things that somebody else has already said. I mean, there's so yeah. many people yeah. doing comedy. There's no there's way you exactly. none of your ideas are original. Which, which comes back to being comfortable. Yeah. Are you comfortable enough with the material, even if it's been done before, to do it your way? Can I think you do it better? That's exactly what the what the thing is. Yeah.
what the thing is. Are you proud enough to be like, okay, fuck it. These are these may not be the best jokes, but they're my jokes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What, what What's a tip for um, a newbie out there? Like how, I know this isn't, there's not really an answer to this, uh, but how would you tell someone, you got to be comfortable, but how would you tell them like how to, how would you, t- how would you tell them how to be comfortable sooner or faster or whatever? Um, I, here's the thing. I don't think, oh shoot. Um, I would say don't look to become comfortable. Okay. Look to get to a place where you're like, okay, I'm just going to focus on what I need to focus on. And eventually that comfort will start it, either. It'll, it'll, it will go away or you'll be like, so focused on what you're doing as far as like, okay, and I'm going to try harder on this, that all that other noise. Cause it's all it is, is just removing noise from everything, your performance, everything. Um, so it's more about, do not care about what's going on around yeah. you. Yeah, I feel like there's this point where everyone's gonna get to, which I haven't got there yet. Uh, hopefully, hopefully soon. Uh, where you're gonna be like, I don't care. Like it, it could be either I don't care what this person thinks, I don't care what that person thinks, I don't care uh-huh. what, you know, I only care about what I want to do, and I'm gonna do it until I get it right. I think that's probably the best the best way to do it. So learn not to take things personally, not oh, to definitely care, that. just go up there for you. Yeah, definitely. Go up there for you. Go, for, go up there for you. If you're having fun, eventually someone's going to see that and be like, ah, this is fun and for me. Yeah, the more comfortable you are, the better you'll do. Yeah. You will but also really, try harder. Like, try harder. Try harder to be comfortable at what you do. Something, <laughs> something like that. Something like that. <laughs> definitely you want to um, think about it. I think you got to check in. I think I feel like a lot of people don't do that. Check in with yourself. Uh, be like, am I still does this still feel right should i still keep going i've done that a couple of times and here's the thing i've never been like I don't, I don't think i've ever asked myself that question uh-huh. i think i felt that like uh you know what am i gonna be great at comedy but i don't answer the question i just go back to the mic again well i mean i mean eventually Let eventually me, one day i might be like you know what yeah I've one day do- you might be like well, i've only been doing mics I? for five years never got a show maybe should right. i just stop i mean I, do you think whatever you're comfortable with yeah exactly about to say yeah, like at some point, you might realize I'm only open mic good enough. Yeah. And I mean, if that's that, what you like, and if you just like the atmosphere hanging out, yeah, go for go, it. Go There's for it. There's nothing wrong go with having it. a hobby. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. I feel like uh, a lot of people might shit on that, but it's here's the thing. You, You're living your life. Yeah. It's, Why are you trying to live it to somebody else's? Right, exactly. And if you realize happiness. I'm, if you realize personally your only open mic good enough, and you're still going to have a good right. time, if someone says like, "Dude, you're only doing open mics," like. I know what I'm doing and I like it and I'm having a great yes. time. Who's losing here. Right. If you're shitting on me because I personally make a choice to do open mics, even if I'm not as good as you are. Right. You know, it doesn't matter because they're probably insecure. Maybe about something like, well, maybe, hold on. But, or First, whatever. Who's going into open mics going, I'm going to be the best at open mics. Um, I mean, it happens, but, well, I mean, but I also I it's not the same as regular shows. No, like, but I, I think some people with any hobby, uh-huh. basketball, uh, crocheting whatever at mm-hmm. some point you realize i am never gonna be lebron <laughs> i'm never gonna make it to the nba but i like doing it as a hobby that's true and comedy, and there's nothing wrong with that and comedy is not one of those hobbies we can do it from home i mean now you, now you can with the zoom shows so i think well, i guess you're right i guess you're right yeah. but I, have I, you I, done the zoom show yet i don't want well, i done one it was like a collaboration more it wasn't a show okay do it to the other comics and you give each other feedback and tags and stuff Oh, I definitely, I haven't done that, but I was, I was like thinking, looking into it. Like, should I do one? I, Would you recommend? It's a good experience to at least try once. Okay. The problem, oh. I, I don't do it more, more often. One time. It's it's good for the travel aspect. You don't have to go the so network, far. That and networking. And it's, it's good. It's also good. It's nice to get the tags. I just don't do it because of the time. Oh, okay. There's usually more in the evening. Oh, okay. And okay. I work. And then uh, now that the mics are opening back up, we're not going to be out there really. On the mm, shows, everyone's going right. back to their mics. There are some that start late on East Coast time, going late. So mm. it's good to go on and give random people will give you feedback. The good, the really good thing is they're listening. Yes, that's the good. That's yes, the main thing because that's when you're gonna know, like, yeah. okay, and they're listening. There's something here. They're giving before. you tags and feedback. Right. Um, they gave me some good tags on mine. Nice. Uh, but I just, it's the time that gets me. 
That's yeah. why I can't. I get that. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I really thought, like, I don't think I am going to like You're this. Like, this may break me. Yeah, because like, I want to hear laughter if I know I'm good. Or the cringiness uh-huh. when I do those dark jokes, which I try to get away. But I like to see the reaction. Well, here's the thing. I, do you really think you're going to stop doing those cringy no, dark jokes? Because no, I feel like you're not. Like no, You but like it. I'm going to def- – like I said, I have Anthony Jelsenik in my head when he does the dark jokes. I have Tosh Pono when he does his dark jokes. Mm, interesting. What, I'm noticing my voice. Yeah. When I'm excited about a joke, I get revved up, I speed up, and I'm like, you know. Oh, okay. okay. I do the dark jokes. Do you play with that pacing? I'm I'm just now realizing it. I've seen my shows. Okay. I've seen some tapings, and I'm like, just now it's clicking like – I'm not going to be Anthony Jelsenek. Maybe a little more Tosh Pointer with his energy. Okay. I love how you call him Tosh Pointer. That's not his name. <laughs> he will always be Tosh Pointer. But <laughs> Daniel Tosh. But, I, but his energy. And I realize when I get excited, I'm happier. And those are the jokes I need to do. And if I like my dark material jokes, I need to make them more me. Okay. Like me more personality. The jokes are fine. It's funny. It's not really me. It's more him. It needs to be me. So rebranding, I guess. Yeah, and, and that's the other thing. This is literally a business, and a lot mm-hmm. of it is branding. Um, but I, as far as your point to, like, you got to do with you what you like, but also it's got to come across as, like, yeah, okay, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. like, I can't do jokes of, like, yeah, I'm so fucking tall. Definitely. Because okay. um, people are right away are like, bullshit, you are, I can see it right now. Uh, you're not 5'7". I am not asking you to pick up anything from the top shelf. Um, so, I mean, I, my best advice would be is do what you like, keep doing it, accept criticism. You don't always have to, here's the thing. You can get criticism or advice that's like positive, get a little bit of everything. Cause there's some information that somebody's going to give you where you're like, that makes sense to me. Yeah. I can use this. That Definitely. other stuff, I don't know about that stuff, but I can use this. Okay, that's. Um, I'm glad you asked yourself that question. Or it's got to make advice. it's got to make sense to you. Yeah. Basically. Um, so that was gonna be my final question here. Um, if there was one advice you can give to people out there thinking about doing comedy, think about starting, what would it be? But you already gave it out. Well, so I, okay. You did my that job. Is that. You did my. Or do you but have something also, else? I, there's another one. Okay, so what is the one you. advice any newbie comic who's thinking about doing this or already started? that they should really think about. There's one piece of advice that I would hear often. And I totally agree with 100%. Um, even if you're not doing stand up on stage and let's say you're thinking about it, you're revving up to it. Do your jokes in front of your friends, but don't do them as jokes. Do them as like you're talking to your friends. So you get the habit of like just talking in a funny way. That is you like, don't try and do stand up, but try and be you with a certain that you already know a certain script in your head you already know oh i can't because we all have these stories i think you guys briefly covered it in your first podcast that you're like i can't wait to tell the story oh when this guy stops talking and i'm gonna hit him with this story where you know what i mean yes because like when you talk when you Mm -hmm. tell when we tell each other stories and we're having a conversation yeah we're funny yes we go on stage because you're more natural yes we go on stage now it's rehearsed you don't want to sound rehearsed Mm -hmm. definitely you want to have a good time you want to be like i've said it on the last one I want to make like when I tell a story, I can be funny, you know, like, ah, right. And I have the right energy because it's me. So yeah, that's good. Go practice with friends until you tell the same story known over, over until the point. It's like, there's no difference. Yep. That's, that's, that would be my, that will serve you very well. Yeah. So invite your friends over, force them to listen to you, mm-hmm. uh, but tell them it'll pay off. Hopefully. Yeah. Cool. Couldn't have said better myself. Awesome. All right. Um, well, thank you for being on the show. And drown babies. No, don't drown I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Baptize them. Baptize them. And bring them back. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for being on the show. I th- oh, it's still recording. Cool. All right. <laughs> I'm edited. All right. Thanks for being on the show. No problem. Um, now, you got your own podcast. You want to yes. do a shout out? The New Hard Times with Chris Spring and Marcus Dietz. Um, it's, is a, this podcast has been a labor of love uh, just because – it's this is where I'm also learning a new craft to be like I gotta keep at it, yeah. but here's the thing you gotta keep doing it to to get it stronger. So if you guys haven't listened to it yet, please listen to it. Johnny's gonna be on it soon. We did do an episode. It didn't go the way we wanted it to, it and maybe you'll awkward. know one day why. It was um, very awkward. That was everyone an awkward, has a podcast that you're like this is unerrable. 
I'm going to burn so many bridges. Um, families will be destroyed. That's kind of what happened. Not saying it was because of you. It wasn't because uh, of it me. Was you. Some, something that happened. You asked the questions Listen, and then you guys got into it. Give them a big question that they got to leave on. So, okay. That's how you get viewership. But cliffhangers. L- definitely listen. Um, every Monday at 10 o'clock, like clockwork, um, New Hard Times with Chris Spring and Marcus Dietz. Cool. Thank you. It's Chris Spring Comedy. Was my phone not charging? Oh crap, it was not charging. Oh shit. I got my charger right here if you want to use it.